What the fuck was that ending? Enemy, released in 2013 and is directed by Denis Villeneuve, who's directed such films like Prisoners, Sicario, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049, and the newly released trailer of Dune, which for whatever reason I have not watched yet. I've seen it pop up on my YouTube wall, and I've just never clicked on it to watch this short little trailer. I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe it's because I haven't seen the original Dune, and maybe I just offended everyone out there because I have not seen that film. I'll get around to it. If any of you want to recommend it for me, you can make a PayPal donation and I'll do it for you as quickly as possible. Cheap plug. And this film is starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Melanie Laurent, Sarah Godin, and Jake Gyllenhaal. Adam Bell is a history professor who feels like he's just kind of trudging through life. He's a smart man, but he's also a very minimalistic man. It seems like his relationship with his girlfriend is fleeting, and he's going down a spiral of depression. However, one night while watching a film, he sees someone in the background who looks shockingly very much like him. And after researching the actor, he finds that this guy is almost an exact clone of him. So Adam tries to meet his doppelganger by the name of Anthony Clare. And once they meet, it sends them both down a path of envy, jealousy, and sadistic intentions. Oh, and there's also a bunch of giant spiders in this film. Why, why do they need to be here? If any of you want to know my true feelings about my fear of spiders, go back and watch my Arachnophobia review. It's not really a review, it's just me watching the film Arachnophobia, because I promised everyone on here that I would if we meet 1,000 subscribers, and... Yeah, it's a film that scarred me from my childhood, and it's re-scarred me as an adult. <laughs> and here in this film, they're just, they're giant. And they come out of nowhere. Hmm. <laughs> that ending? I am not joking. I jumped. I haven't jumped while watching a movie since, in like a decade. Watching them now, I'm just like, okay, I kind of don't know what goes behind it and everything, but I physically jumped when that ending happened. <laughs> and I'm going to call it right now. I, I have to get into spoilers with this film because there is so much in-depth work that I want to talk about that... I, if I say anything, it could ruin the whole first viewing experience for you if you've never seen this film. So stop this review right now, go watch this movie, because I definitely recommend it for you, and then come back. I'll give you a second. Hi. Welcome back. That fucking ending, huh? So I had heard a lot of good things about this film, and I heard, you know, through the grapevine that, oh, it's Jake Gyllenhaal, and he's playing two of himself. He's playing a, a clone of himself. He's gonna, both of himself is gonna be on screen. And as the film was going along, and as they were seeing each other for the first time, I'm thinking, oh, was this kind of like a, like a, a sci-fi thriller, where this will turn out to be you know, some weird cloning experiment? And one of these two is the clone? Yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. I, I kind of went the us route, where, oh yeah, they're clones, and the person that we're actually following was the clone, and the person who we just met was the original person, and then one of them's gonna kill the other one, and then it's gonna be like a huge twist. Yeah, basically I was thinking this film was gonna be the movie Us, just with Jake Gyllenhaal, but it is not that at all. This is one of those movies where when it ends, you kind of ask yourself, what the fuck did I just see? And it's one of those movies that you have to kind of go online and, and do a little bit of research just to see, okay, what's going on here? Any notes from the director? Because I, I have an idea, but I really want to know. And there are many interviews where the director, Denny Villeneuve, says that this movie is about the subconscious of the character that Jake Gyllenhaal plays. So Jake Gyllenhaal is not cloned, this is just his psyche being split into two with the situation that he is in in his life. Which, as I say that out loud, makes this film really, really cool. We get to see a physical representation of a man combating himself and combating a situation that he is in that maybe he kind of wants to be in, but he also despises that he is in with the whole situation with his pregnant wife. During his first lecture, he's talking to his students about dictatorships and how dictatorships exist because of the desire for control and having all of the control of the narrative of the society of situations. And that's what this movie is. It's his character trying to get control over his life 
and control where his desires go. Because here's my understanding of, of what this is. The character that Jake Gyllenhaal plays, whether it's Anthony or whether it's Adam, was a struggling actor. Had a few extra scenes or a few background scenes, maybe a couple lines here and there, but his acting career never really amounted to anything. And then suddenly he got this really cool teaching job, and it's a nice stable job, and he married his wife, and his wife is now pregnant with his first child. But he has these inner desires of not being tied down. He wants to be in control. He wants to go out and have sex with whoever he wants. He wants to go out and party and drink and go to sex party drink clubs whenever he wants. And this whole story is a physical representation of him splitting his mind between the responsible version of himself, where he is the teacher, but he's also sleeping with this random woman, and the entrepreneur who is stuck in this relationship with a wife and soon-to-be kid. And he sees women in his life as spiders. That's where all of these freaking huge-ass spiders come into play. We see a spider at the very beginning, about to be stepped on. We see a gigantic spider who is crawling over the city of Toronto midway through the movie. This was right after he talked to his mother, so I mean, I would assume there's no bigger spider than that than your mom. And then we see the big spider at the end when both of his consciousness kind of go back together and he's kind of reliving the irresponsible side of his character. That's what I'm getting from it. And I, th I think the way that we get here and the way that it is shot on screen is brilliant. I love this movie. Yes, it has spiders in it, and I physically jumped and almost screamed when I watched it, but yeah, I love this thing. It's one of those films where every word that is spoken means something in the end. It plays into the climax and the resolution of the film, so if you're going through it for the first time, pay attention to everything that is being said because it plays into where this character ends up and it plays into why he's seeing these spiders kind of take over his life or attempt to take over his life. I just, I think the film is layered in so many ways. It's shot beautifully too. I love all the intense close-ups that we get. I love the color palette that we see on screen. We get a lot of yellows and a lot of amber colors. It's like the, the screen was basically peed on and I like it. <laughs> to me, the color just kind of gave it the the idea of, hey, we're we're under we're under the spotlight, we're under the microscope. We are being studied here. Or at least Jake Gyllenhaal is being studied here, and we are the, the scientists studying him. It could also represent a sunrise and a sunset to this character and this character's psyche or the psyches that split out from his brain. That, that's my interpretation of it. I, there are hundreds of different interpretations that you can get with this film, I think, at least when it comes to that aspect, the color ratios and everything. I, this film is just so layered, and I can appreciate so much a film that has this much in-depth care and this much in-depth character development that I just, I have to put it at the top of my list. This is, this was wonderful. The Big Spiders? They bring it down a couple of pegs for me, but it's a psychological thriller that really keeps you guessing throughout what's going on. Again, I was going down the us route, but it totally flipped on me and blew my mind at the end. With this being Halloween, does this have any horror aspects? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's spiders. Those are pretty horrifying, and it scared me to death. But the main aspect of this film, it's a psychological thriller. It's a psychological study into this character who is trying to keep control over his life and sometimes he lets other people in to control it or to help him out through a situation. And maybe by the end, maybe he regains control of his own desires and wants to live out his own desires. Or maybe he just decides that, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here now, I'm with my wife, I'm about to give birth to, uh, to my first child, and maybe I'll, I'll take control of that, and maybe that'll be enough for me. Probably not, though. It's one of the films that just proves that Denis Villeneuve is one of the best working directors today. I love his vision, I love his style, I love his attention to detail when it comes to character development, and I love his attention to detail when it comes to just shooting the damn movie everything. I don't think there is a single movie of his that I haven't watched that I've gone, wow, what was on screen was not beautiful, because everything is. Even with Sicario, the, the shots that we get in there are stunning. 
So, Enemy, it's another feather in his cap. He is a great director. This is a great movie. I recommend it for everyone. Just keep an open mind and pay attention to everything. You know what? I'm going to give Enemy 5 out of 5 Blu-rays. I think I see blue. He looks glorious. You know, this film was shot in Toronto, and there was a big spider sculpture in Toronto called Mother, and it, that, it looks very much like the spider in this movie that was walking over the city. Well, now I never want to go to Toronto. Probably don't want to go to Canada now if that thing's there. Spiders. Suck. So everyone, we are going to be continuing our horror Halloween month for the month of October. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. It's one of my wife's favorite holidays. We've been looking forward to it all year long because 2020 has been just, it's been a big shitball. And with us celebrating Halloween, I mean, we're... we're we're doing it. We're we're all in. So we're going to continue with the horror genre over the next couple of weeks, continuing with another recommendation and another screener from gingernutsofhorror.com. So we'll check that one out next time. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, leave a recommendation below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter and leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout out on the channel. And if you really want me to do your recommendation and get it done as quickly as possible, or if you just want to support me and help me build this channel into something bigger than it's been for the last three years you can make a paypal donation on the main page of my youtube channel any size donation will do and you can attach your movie with your donation and if i have access to it i will watch it and get my review out and ready and publish as quickly as possible so guys have you seen enemy what did you think about it did you jump at the end like i did Let's not be shy here. You know you did. Whatever you thought, comment below. Let me know what you thought about. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So I will see everyone next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.